Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. I'm waiting for you all to join bit by bit by bit. People are joining, welcome. Welcome to a sunny Wednesday, which is nice for a change. I haven't had uh, a little bit too much rain for my liking over the last week or so, but uh, picking up much better, which is, which is great. And actually, because obviously um, today's destination is not far away, what, um, what a lovely place to visit on a day like today, I have to say. So um, welcome to our session this morning on um, Jersey, um, in conjunction with Airways and, and the Jersey Tourist Office. Um, hopefully you'll really enjoy this. Jersey is a place I've been lucky enough to visit. It's wonderful, I have to say. So I'm, I'm in the fan club. You'll be pleased to hear you too. Um, so I'm definitely in the fan club for, uh, for Jersey. Obviously, with everything that's gone on COVID related after the 16 months, its popularity has grown because people are looking for places close to home to kind of restart their travel plans. And I think that's probably why so many people have, have joined this morning is because of that and maybe thinking, well, maybe Jersey's on my list, but what's it really got to offer and what can you do there and what are the hotels like? And, you know, hopefully you'll get a lot of those questions answered. As I always say in all of these sessions, please, please, um, tap your screen, there is a chat facility, pop any question you've got in that chat facility and then I will ask our experts at the end of the session. Um, so please don't forget that because these sessions are put on, not for me or my benefit, they're absolutely put on for you. So if there's anything that you think of that's not mentioned in the presentation or kicks off a question, you think, oh, what do they mean by that or whatever, please pop it in the chat and then we'll, we'll pick that up with Sarah and Jill at the end of the session. But um, In the meantime, I will pass over to Sarah who will launch forth on all things Jersey. So um, over to you, Sarah. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to just run through the slides um, with you about Jersey this morning, um, but I'm Sarah Barton, as um, Miles said, Head of Trade for Visit Jersey, and I'm joined by Jill McCarthy from Airways Holidays, our Channel Island Specialist Tour Operator who work in conjunction with Miles Morgan. So Jill, good morning. Hello. Hi, everybody. Nice so, to be here. Uh, yeah, it's nice to nice to be here generally, and and to um, you know join you on this webinar. We're delighted to um, just have the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about Jersey, um, and hopefully today we can just give you a flavour of Jersey and bring Jersey to your homes. Also, I just want to start, and I know there's lots of um, there has been lots of confusion out there with travel requirements, etc., for all the different destinations. Um, you know, now opening up. What I want to do is just take this opportunity just to touch upon um, some of the travel requirements for Jersey, so you understand how simple it is to come to the island. And as Miles said, we'll we'll end with any questions. So my, both myself and Jill are happy to answer any questions at the end about. Um, the destination about the travel requirements. So let's kick off with the first slide. And I'm going to start really just, just talking about, um, you know, those travel requirements to Jersey. So Jersey has been fortunate to be in a position to welcome visitors back to the island since the 26th of April. Um, being part of the common travel area, we're already a destination considered as green um, by the UK government. So we've been green for quite some time. You won't see us on the foreign office list, um, we're a destination that's green already. So we, when reopening, obviously health and safety measures were always in the forefront of the destination's mind and the government um, and the island has led the way in testing and track and trace. So um, I'll run through some of those details um, as we go through. Um, I'm gonna briefly outline today the travel requirements, but you know, as we said, if there's any questions, do ask them later on. So as of the 30th of July, just yesterday, the requirements have been um, eased um, a little bit more, which does mean for you, all visitors are welcome. Jersey is currently offering free PCR testing on arrival. And again, we'll go through the details of this um, as we go through the presentation. There's no isolation required um, if you're double vaccinated. So hopefully for all of those who've had your double vaccination, this is really great news. Um, also, if you're thinking about family holiday with your wider family, children under 18 and children generally are welcome, but there are some, um, again, some restrictions, I'll just go into those. Um, you do not need a PCR test before um, returning to the UK from Jersey, which is great. You don't have to take one before you come over. Um, so um, there's no quarantine required when you get home. 
Um, and then in the next slide, I'll kind of go through all of this in a little more detail. So that was just a snapshot um, of what the island's travel requirements are. So let's, let's go into a little bit more detail. So if you've already booked to come to Jersey or if you're thinking about booking to, to come to Jersey, we actually just before um, you or once you've booked, we would, as a destination, ask you to complete a pre-departure registration form. That's something you complete on the Jersey government website, but Air Miles, Miles Morgan, you know, they, they can help um, direct you. Um, they're the specialists, so they'll give you all this information. So it's a very simple procedure. The pre-departure form, which you complete 48 hours before arrival, this is where you declare your travel history for the last 10 days and your vaccination status. So once that's completed, you'll receive an email from the Jersey government confirming the, the status to travel to Jersey, and um, which um, as long as you've stayed within a green area, not being sort of overseas to anywhere, which is currently on the UK's red list, um, you'll get green status to travel to the island and you'll receive a QR code in this email from the Jersey government. And this is something you'd present on arrival um, in Jersey. Um, it would be something you'll receive on email, so you can either print it off, or if, if you've got a smartphone and are happy using it, you can present that um, via the smartphone. Um, but don't worry, to any of, the, any of you who are a little nervous about technology, I know sometimes it doesn't always work, and I've had many experiences of that. Um, what, you, what you could do is always, um, you know, when you arrive in the destination, if you don't have that QR code to hand, as long as you've filled in that pre-departure form, you just um, tell the, the staff at the airport or the ports that you've completed the form and they'll be able to find you on the system. So that will give you that entry into Jersey. So on arrival, if you're fully vaccinated or not fully vaccinated for both, you would be asked to take um, a PCR test. This PCR test is free. Um, so let's just focus on those fully vaccinated. So when you arrive at the airport or the port, um, they you will um, you will be able to when you arrive. Sorry, I'm getting my words muddled up here. Good morning. Um, when you arrive, uh, the the in the port and the airport, they have facilities there where they do a free PCR test for all arrivals. Um, if you've had two vaccinations you don't have to isolate at all. So you can go straight out and enjoy your holiday in Jersey. So it's really fantastic. No isolation period in a hotel, nothing like that. You just take the free PCR test on arrival. Um, and this is something you would declare in your pre-departure form um, that you're willing to take that. Now, if for any reason you don't want to have that test and you'd rather not wait in, uh, in a, um, at the airport to have that, you can have the option of doing your own PCR test at your own cost and sending it to the government 72 hours before departure. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's quite viable to do, but it, there are obviously is a cost to attach to that. What, what's great and what the Jersey government are offering is free PCR testing on arrival. And then what they do is once you've had that PCR test and you, you've set off on your holiday, they'll contact you and just confirm it's negative and, um, you know, and they'll just keep in contact throughout your stay on the island and um, just ask you if you're feeling well and you just contact them back and say, yes, I'm feeling fine. So it's a really, really simple procedure. And, um, and this is why um, it takes away all those complexities of um, that other destinations have at the moment. Um, but it also keeps health and safety at the forefront of everyone's mind and makes sure that, that um, you know, everyone coming into the island for the islanders and for the visitors, you know, you have a negative test. Um, if you have family that you want to come with, there's different um, specifications for children. For children um, aged between zero and 10, they're not required to complete a pre-departure registration form. They don't have to have a PCR test on their arrival and they don't have to isolate. Children age 11 to 17, it's slightly different. They are required to complete the pre-departure form. They have a free PCR test on arrival, but they do have to isolate until they get a negative test result. And then you can see on the other side of my slide, um, those who are not fully vaccinated, and, and potentially there aren't many of you out there listening who aren't, but just to touch on upon it, um, just in case you've got family you want to come to who haven't yet had their double vaccinations, you have that pre, they will have that pre PCR test on arrival. 
And again, once you get the results from day zero, so you would isolate until you get that negative test and then um, you can go out and enjoy the destination. I can say we have a laboratory on the island. So the testing is turn turnaround of the testing is very, very quick, under 12 hours in most cases. So even if you did have to isolate, it's, it's the tests are returned back very quickly. OK, I hope I haven't confused you there. Happy to answer any questions, as I said. This slide just, just touches upon, again, that point before departure. If you've booked, you would register online, um, completing your pre-departure test. This is 48 hours before your arrival. You get that. Um, you would also need to provide on that pre-departure test your status with regards to whether you're fully vaccinated. And it asks you to um, ensure you can provide that confirmation um, certificate, either again, your NHS app or whether that's a, your card, a printed card that you've got from the NHS. They, they show you all the options of what you can show to confirm your certification. Um, and then if you, just to touch upon it again, if you want to fast track, if you don't want to have the test on arrival, you can and you do have the option to take the test beforehand at your own cost. Um, but I can say I went over to Jersey just last week, actually, and the whole process is super efficient and super quick. Um, and, you know, it really takes no time at all. And then you're out and enjoying your holiday before you know it. OK, so the next slide just touch, touches upon Jersey's um, Visit Safe Charter. So the other consideration is very much um, as an island, we're committed to ensuring visitors have um, the safest break possible when they're out there on the island. So we've um, the Jersey, the Jersey government, the Jersey Hospitality Group, Visit Jersey have worked hard together, um, tourism industry partners. Um, to um, come together and, and um, pull together a visit safe charter. And this is where our tourism industry has um, a pledge to safeguard visitors every step of their holiday. So you can be reassured when you're out on the island, they have put sturdy measures in place to ensure we're considering um, you know, it, it um, and preventing any kind of spread where we can. So um, look out for the Visit Safe logo and um, you know, all the hotels are participating in this. So now let's move on to the fun part of this presentation, because I think this is the important bit. Why Jersey? Um, as Miles said, it is a beautiful, beautiful destination for any of you who haven't been there. Um, we're part of the UK common travel area, so we're well placed for those who are looking for that staycation a little bit closer to home this year. We know there's still confusion out there in the marketplace over destinations you can and can't travel to, lots of different requirements. So it's an ideal destination if you're feeling a bit cautious about going too far um, and if you don't know what the international travel situation is. We're known as the island break. Um, what does that mean? Jersey is more than a city break, a beach break, or a countryside break. It's all of those combined. Um, you'll have the best of those elements. And um, you know, we are we have departures from all across the UK. Jill will talk about specifically those that are really relevant to you later on. But um, the, the flight time in most cases is less than an hour. So it's really quick to, to come to Jersey. Um, and it's really about coming to a destination where you can relax, have an adventure, enjoy the food. Um, it's the perfect place to, you know, reconnect, revitalize, revitalize and come up for air. Um, Jersey really is a unique destination. Um, we love to do things differently. Jersey has its own language, which is Jerie, which you may not be aware of. We have our own laws. Um, we have our own legendary knitted jumpers. You've all heard of the Jersey jumper. We have our famous potatoes. Um, I don't know if you saw the James Martin programme on ITV on um, the other night. Um, he was cooking with the Jersey potatoes. We have, of course, our celebrated dirt Jersey cows. So all of this makes us unexpectedly independent and deliciously um, unique. Now, I certainly think it's a place worth visiting and hopefully after today, you, you'll feel the same. It's perfect for couples, families or solo travellers. Um, and you know, whenever you're on the island, you're never more than 10 minutes from the sea. So it's a, a beautiful place to come to. Um, here's just a map that gives you an overview of where Jersey is. I'm sure you all know, we're actually closer to France than we are to the UK. So Jersey sits about 100 miles south of um, Britain and actually only 14 miles off the French coast and um, 
really this gives us the unique kind of English with a very British flair. Um, you don't need a passport to come to Jersey. It's the same time zone. We drive on the same side of the road as the UK, but we offer something 100% different. So it really is just a, a unique destination. So this um, slide just gives you a aerial view of the island, which I always think is quite nice to see because you can't imagine um, how Jersey looks. Um, it's only nine miles by five. So as I said, we're never more, if you stood in the center, you're never really more than 10 minutes from the sea. Um, it's perfect for those people looking for first time getaway after lockdown. Um, we're small in size, but we always say it's an island that's big in personality and hopefully you'll understand why once we um, run through the rest of this presentation. Um, St. Helier is our capital. Um, located on the south side of the island. And that's also where the ferry port is. So if you chose to come by ferry, um, that slow travel is an option. Um, it's it's really a really nice way to arrive and you arrive Saint, in, straight into St. Helier. The airport is located on the east, the west side of the island. Sorry, I'm getting my east west muddled up there. Is located on the west side of the island. And it's really only 20 minutes. If you took a bus from the airport, it's only 20 minutes from um, St. Helier if you were taking public transport. Um, and as you can see from this aerial view, we've got some beautiful, beautiful, long, sandy beaches across the island on the sort of east, south and west side. On the north coast of the island, um, it's more kind of winding cliff paths and dramatic views, perfect for walking all season. So it gives another sort of diverse landscape. Um, the north side has a fascinating history of folklore and fishing culture. Um, you know, walk along the north side and you reveal some really truly hidden gems from sandy coves, pebble beaches and secret harbours. Um, on the east side of the island, um, this is where the hills and often the hills are where the Jersey Royal potatoes are grown. Um, this is where the hills kind of meet the um, meet the sandy beaches. Um, you'll find particularly on the east side Montalguy Castle casting its imposing shadow over the picturesque fishing village of um, Gori, um, which is the center of Jersey's food heritage. Um, also on the south side, you know, you have these stunning, beautiful golden sandy beaches, and um, we will talk about those in a bit. Um, but many afternoons can be spent there just enjoying the sunshine and, and watching some beautiful sunsets. Um, and on the west coast, again, another beautiful be beach is St. Juan's. Um, it's, it's known as the five mile stretch um, and it's really popular actually for surfers because it's, um, you know, it's the best place to catch the waves. Um, and also a, a great place to see the Corbiere Lighthouse, which is on the southwestern corner of the island, um, which has amazing architecture, quite a striking lighthouse that many people go and visit while they're on the island. Um, and then if we go back to Jersey's cosmopolitan city, St. Helier is situated in the south side of the island, as I said, that's an ideal place for shopping, unique culinary experiences, there's some great bars um, and street food that can be found. Um, so a wonderful place to go to. And, and there's some beautiful places like St. Albans Bay, where you can, a really small fishing village, which is lovely to, to um, walk from St. Helier onto there. So, you know, that's just a flavor of the island. How do we get there? I mean, I briefly touched upon that and Jill will go into a bit more detail about this. Getting here is really easy. There's two ways, ferry and plane. Um, we have great connectivity to the island, which is fantastic. Um, departures from all around the um, UK. And as I said, it takes in most cases just under an hour and we have a choice of airlines that you can travel with. Um, it's very easy if you did catch a plane to get from the airport down to St. Helier, either by bus, taxi, there's always taxis up at the airport, um, you know, by bus it really takes 20 minutes, that's it, um, or, you know, if you wanted to pick up car hire, and that's something you can work with Airways Holidays with Miles Morgan to, to work out what you really want from your holiday. As I said, driving on the island's easy, it's a great way to go and explore the island if you want to just have that freedom. Um, and but otherwise there's great transportation links um, throughout the island and you can also get taxis. Um, okay, this slide just really, I just want to touch upon the accommodation and, and Jill's gonna um, again 
talk through some of the fantastic offers she's got with um, Miles Morgan at the moment. So she'll go into a bit more detail about the accommodation. I think from our perspective, the accommodation is always part of your island experience. So whether it's whether you want a room with a view or um, a luxury hotel or boutique hotel, guest house or unique heritage stay, Jersey's got it all. So, I mean, it's it's really about whether you're looking for a spa, an indoor pool to be located right on the beach. I mean, we have a choice of everything from sort of French chateau type accommodation to Mediterranean beach style accommodation. Um, we have some fantastic luxury hotels across the island, um, but we've got a real range, whether it's for families, for couples, you know, whether you want an award winning spa, there's all sorts of options there available. And I'll leave Jill to talk about those, um, the types of accommodation and some of the offers that she has available for you. Um, this slide just really kind of talks about um, the amazing activities that are avail available on the island. I mean, as I said, the island's nine by five. Um, we're surrounded by sea. That's what makes us so wonderful. Um, and the landscape is, as I kind of briefly touched upon, really diverse from the north coast when you can, where you can go on some wonderful walks or discover really beautiful hidden bays to, to you know, cycling. I mean, if, if you're a bit more energetic, looking for exploring um, at your own pace, you know, you can hire bikes or get electric bikes that will take you around the island if you're not feeling so energetic. Um, but it's a great way to kind of take in or spend an afternoon exploring parts of the island. You can also do other things like um, we have these great rib boat tours that um, go across to small islands just sort of 20 minutes off the coast of Jersey called Les Ecuero and Laminkies. And, and again, these are things you can um, you know, book through Airways Holidays and Miles Morgan. Um, they take you out to these beautiful islands and they're kind of like their own moonscape. Um, it's a wonderful thing to do and explore while you're on the island. Um, other things is Jersey has a, an amazing national park. So again, there's plenty of beautiful places to go and um, walk and um, discover the island's character. Um, and we have some of the largest tidal ranges in the world. So I think it's worth remembering Jersey's as an island doubles in size when the tide goes out. So, I mean, you can do other things like go on a um, foraging tour where you go down to the seabeds and learn about what's, um, you know, those wonderful seaweeds that are there. Um, if you're really feeling energetic, you know, you could go for a hike across the island, um, or if you're just feeling a little lazy, why not just go and take in a relaxing walk and find one of those unique Jersey pubs and, um, and enjoy the Liberation Jersey Ale. So I hope that's beginning to sound enticing, um, but let's move on to even more sort of enticing things. So if any of you are hungry, this will probably make you even hungrier. Um, Jersey is known for its big four. So normally if you're in Africa, you'd be talking about the lions and elephants. Um, in Jersey, we're known for our Jersey roll potatoes, our oysters, our lobsters, and of course, Jersey dairy. And um, Jersey is an island famous for its food. I mean, we've got some wonderful beach cafes, chic restaurants, um, village delis. Um, you really can experience it all. And it's packed full of amazing eating experiences that add a kind of authentic local flavor to the to your to your holiday. So there's so many places you can go and discover. Um, the Jersey roll potatoes, just to talk a little bit about them, I think because of that famous tide that we have, the tide actually kind of nourishes the land and gives them that unique um, rich mineral flavor. Um, so you'll always find a Jersey roll potato. And actually for any of you coming back from Jersey, just a little tip, you can, if you want to at the airport or even around the island, they have these um, hedge veg sort of boxes and you can go and pick up a bag of Jersey roll potatoes, put your two pounds in the honesty box and um, go and do some cooking yourself when you get home. Now the oysters, if you like oysters, um, I mean, they're amazing. Jersey has some of the largest oyster beds in the UK, which many of you may not have known. You can actually do something like a, a tour down to those oyster beds and I've done it myself. Um, and you go and you learn about how the oysters are cultivated. You can try the oysters and finish off with a glass of champagne. So doesn't that sound good? Um, and of course, you know, knowing the tides and um, the currents that they orbit around the island, we have a wealth of um, wonderful shellfish um, crab and lobster. So you can be sure if you're ordering any seafood on the menu, it's going to be fresh. Um, 
And then there's our famous Jersey dairy cows, um, you know, and Jersey isn't all about the sea. I mean, it has a beautiful um, landscape. And if you're driving around the island or walk around the island or on the bus, you'll see these wonderful fields and I'm sure you'll spot an iconic Jersey cow. They're famous for their rich, creamy milk. And, um, you know, you can treat yourself on your holiday um, by having a either a locally made cheese or um, some wonderful Jersey ice cream or that Jersey um, butter is incredible. Um, there are plenty of places to eat and um, across the island and that's really going to be part of your holiday. Whether you're looking for a Michelin star restaurant from Bohemia, which is um, our Michelin star restaurant on the island, or there was Mark Jordan on the beach. That's one of the restaurants that featured in James Martin's programme the other night on ITV. And um, that's a great place to go and eat. But some of the places I really love, um, and I'm sure Jill would agree with me here, are some of those hidden places. Um, there's a place called The Hungry Man over in, um, nestled in, in the harbour at Rosal Bay, over on the kind of um, east, northeast side of the island. Um, and it's called, there's a kiosk called The Hungry Man, which was established quite a while ago, but they do great burgers, but they also do the best crab sandwiches. So, um, and delicious homemade crab cakes and um, cakes. There's also a wonderful place on the West Coast over at St. Juan's um, called Faulkner's Fishery, which is an old converted German bunker. Um, and the Faulkner family, who also have a market in Beresford Market in St. Helier, um, they have a, a stall there. But um, yeah, they've converted an old German bunker and they bring in the catch of the day and then sell the catch to anyone who heads up there. But also in the spring, summer months, they do this wonderful kind of fresh fish barbecue, which is really simplistic, but it's the best food I've tasted. Um, and then any of you who just want to kind of hunt out some great places to um, have a drink in St. Helia. We have the Channel Islands Distillery, which um, you can go on a um, gin tour and um, go and enjoy some of the, the gin trails across um, in, in St. Helia and also foraging tours, as I mentioned. So there's lots of things to see and do on the island, um, which you, you, you know, incorporates the food element. Um, now I'm moving on just to the next slide, which just touches on some of the other attractions. So, you know, as I said, as a small island, it's amazing how many places you can go and see and do and fill your days exploring the island. Um, I'm going to mention the zoo. I mean, many people may not think to go to a zoo on their holiday, but um, this is a really unique use, zoo. It's called... Um, Durrell's Wildlife Park, um, so Jersey Zoo, sorry. Um, it's, it was set up by Gerald Durrell um, over 60 years ago, and it's a stunning 32 acre um, park with valleys, woodland, and it has some of the rarest animals in the world. And it's all about conservation. It's really Jersey's jewel in the crown. Um, you could happily spend a, a day or half a day just wandering around there, just um, enjoying just the surroundings and learning a little bit about the rare breeds that they've managed to um, save. Um, you'll also see in the top um, left hand corner, this is Lamar Wine Estate, again, a popular place for many people to go, go to. It's a 20 acre working estate. Um, and it's famous for its wines, but also it's Jersey apple brandy cream, which they make there. They also make Jersey black butter, which is a unique recipe to the island. Um, so you can take a tour around there. You can also go and have a lovely lunch or an afternoon tea um, and, um, you know, and try and test the Jersey black butter. They have a great shop where you can go and buy all the different unique produce of Jersey as well. Um, and just generally, you know, there's lots of things to do around the island, whether it's with families or, um, you know, you want to just explore at your own pace. And we'll talk about the history in, the, in a minute. But before we do, um, some other places worth visiting, um, Jersey Lavender Farm, you can wander around the beautiful gardens there. Um, Samir Manor, um, situated just outside St. Helier. They have botanical gardens, privately owned, um, a wonderful cafe there. It's almost 100 years old there they have some beautiful gardens to explore a renowned herb garden and um, Japanese garden and then on the west coast as I mentioned over in St. Juan's they have Jersey Wetland Centre where you can see um, some of the diverse bird life or animal life in Jersey um, you know we're really surrounded by abundant with nature and wild spaces so it's you know a beautiful place just to enjoy the landscape um, so there's more to Jersey than you think 
Um, moving on to the history of the island, and I think this is a really fascinating um, element to Jersey. I mean, Jersey's history has been moulded over time from the Ice Age period to the occupying forces. Um, you know, we have local traditions, um, our own language. language. Um, so there's some wonderful tucked away secret places, but there's, um, you know, some superb um, history to go and explore. We've got actually got three castles on the island. So the picture on the left, that's Montour Guy Castle that overlooks Gory Village. Um, that's a really fascinating um, place to visit and spend um, some time. It's an old um, 15th century castle. You can sort of go up to the turrets or you can visit um, Elizabeth Castle, which is actually accessible at low tide. It's, it's in or just um, off from St. Helier. So at low tide, you can actually walk out to the castle. Um, at high tide, you can kind of take a duck boat out there and, um, and go and explore. Um, we also have other fascinating places like the Hampton Museum dating back to the 15th century. Um, a great place to learn about Jersey's rural life, um, explore the orchards. We also have 16 George Street, where you can step back in time to the Regency period in, in Jersey. Um, Jersey Museum is a great place. It's located in St. Helier, and I would recommend anyone going there because they have a really short film and they can go in and watch for free if you don't want to go into the museum. But it just paints that picture about Jersey's history all the way back to the Ice Age period. And then, of course, um, I briefly mentioned Corby Air Lighthouse, which you can see a picture of there. And then, of course, you know, I touched upon it briefly, is Jersey's history um, around its World War II history. Obviously, it was occupied in one of the only British Isles, um, well, the Channel Islands were the only British Isles to be occupied during the war. Um, you know, it's it's a fascinating period and a story where many of the, you know, a story sort of unknown to many people where um, the Germans occupied the island from 1940 to 1945, um, just last year, it was their 75th anniversary. Um, and, you know, it really is, it did mould the island's story and um, it's great to kind of delve into that and learn a little bit more about it. And there's some things you can do, you can go up and take a vintage bus up to the Jersey War Tunnels, which, which I would recommend anyone going to, they're our top attraction. Um, and they really tell the story of what it was like to be an islander during this period. It was a harsh time for the islanders. And, you know, what it was like to, you know, did you befriend the Germans? Did you not? Um, you know, and it, it's a, an immersive experience that you, you know, self-guided tour that you sort of go through into this complex tunnels that were built by the slaves over in, you know, that were brought over by the Germans. And um, it became um, an underground hospital. So it's a fascinating place to go to. We also have um, resistance trails across the island, again, that you can discover. Um, there's old bunkers, you know, the, the whole island was quite strongly fortified during, during that period. So you'll find um, lots of bunkers and um, tower blocks, as you can see, where you can go and sort of discover and see often how they were left by the Germans um, at that period. There's also an occupation tapestry that's at the Maritime Museum that was um, woven by the islanders to celebrate the 50th anniversary. So again, that's quite interesting to do. And there's tour groups that go out, you know, and, um, you know, will take you out. And you, if you want to learn that in-depth story, they can they can run through that with you. And again, I'm sure this is something Airways Holidays and Miles Morgan can, can kind of delve into and find different options for you if that's particularly of interest. But it, it is a fascinating um, time and something that's worth learning about. So finally, I'm just going to touch upon um, a little a bit about, I mean, obviously, the island has normally has lots of events um, throughout the year on the island. So whether you're going in the summer period, in low season, in high season, you know, or during those sort of early autumn periods, I mean, it's a it's a wonderful place to come to all year round, there is always something going on. It's obviously been a difficult year, year this year. So things like, you um, you can see a picture on the right hand side of um, a festival called the Battle of Flowers. That normally happens every year. Unfortunately, this isn't going to happen in Jersey. It happens in August, but this year won't be happening, sadly, due to the pandemic. But it will come back. Um, we also have other things like the Jersey Marathon. Um, we have the boat show. 
Um, we also have a food festival called Tenefest, which happens normally um, end of October. That's possibly going to happen. This is all about how you can come to the island and try some of those wonderful food, food produce and some great menus um, from between, uh, uh, you know, £10 to £25. So, you know, again, um, we can share with you the events that will go ahead this year. They might be a bit limited, but don't forget, if you're thinking about Jersey in the future, there are normally lots of other things going on on island. So to kind of sum up, just, I know I've talked a lot and um, excuse me for talking so much, but just in summary, you know, if you haven't been to Jersey, we have so much to do on this small island. It really, you know, if you came for a short break or for a seven nights, you wouldn't be short of things to do. We have over 330 restaurants, um, 500 miles of walks, um, the island speaks English, but with a Jersey twang, their, their own language is called Gerrier. Um, we have three castles on the island. Um, we accept the pound note, um, but Jersey does have its own currency as well. And we have some of the third largest tidal ranges in the world. So that makes us quite interesting because, as I said, the island doubles in size when the tide goes out. We're actually the sunniest part of the British Isles. So as Miles touched upon, you know, earlier on, we're, we're actually closer to France than we are to the UK, but we have our own sort of microclimate. And um, yeah, last year we were the sunniest part of the British Isles. So, you know, that's the wonderful thing about Jersey. You can come and enjoy those beautiful sandy beaches and relax. Um, we're 14 miles off the French coast. And as I said earlier, that's what gives us that kind of British but English, um, British but um, French flair to, to the island. Always something unique and different to see. All, actually all the road signs in Jersey are in French. So it gives you a taste of how, how much influence the French had on the island. Um, we've got 24 beaches, but we've got so many more different hidden bays. I mean, it's a wonderful place to go and rock pool and discover little beach cafes. There's so much to see and do, whether the tide's in or the tide's out. Um, we're a crown dependency, so we have our own customs, laws and traditions. And sorry for the pun, but we have 3,000 legendary cows across the island. So I'm sure you're going to spot those at some point if you come to Jersey. So I'm going to hand you over to Jill. Um, Jill's just going to talk a, a bit more about Airways holidays. So um, again, happy to answer any questions at the end. But um, Jill, over to you. Hello. Hi. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm rather hungry now. Thinking about fresh fish barbecues and champagne and oysters. Sounds like heaven. So I'm Jill McCarthy. I'm Sales Director at Airways Holidays. We're part of the Channel Island Travel Group, which is the largest specialist holiday operator to the Channel Islands. We're fully bonded members of ABTA and the CAA. So that means you can book with confidence and know that your holiday is safe with us. And we've been exclusively providing holidays to the Channel Islands for over 30 years. I'm based in the UK, but our company, head office and res team are all based in Jersey. So we are very close to the product that we love and the, and the holidays that we operate. Um, okay, so ready when you are, Sarah. So we're gonna, we've carefully selected some holidays for you based on either flying from Bristol and we can offer travel by sea too. So it's just over an hour's flight from Bristol airport, which is really convenient, very easy and hassle-free or travel by sea is perfect if you want to load up the car and have a more leisurely start to your trip. The ferry takes about four and a half hours. All I can say about Jersey, if, if you've been already, you know how the appeal of the island itself. And if you haven't, here's a great opportunity to discover a little hidden gem. Um, the holidays that I've selected are mainly based on traveling in, in uh, September, October. There are availability for July and August. It's getting a little bit tight, but there's still holidays there if anybody wants to uh, zip off quickly and get a break. So um, the first one we've chosen is the Atlantic Hotel. It's a four star hotel, family run. It's got art deco architecture and breathtaking views of, on the Clifftop Hotel. And it's a favorite with our visitors to Jersey. It's also a member of the small luxury hotels of the world. The only one on the island. It has 48 rooms, two suites, two pools, a seasonal spa and the beautiful ocean restaurant. You also find the hotel has a small gym, sauna, indoor pool and jacuzzi with an outdoor pool and all weather tennis court as well. 
The dining experience at the Atlantic is exceptional, really beautiful food at the Ocean Restaurant. And there's also a lounge, terrace menu, and beautiful afternoon teas I'd highly recommend at the hotel as well. So that's the Atlantic Hotel, highly recommended and a firm favorite with our customers. The next hotel is the Five Star Grand. So this is um, got a great situation right in the heart of Jersey's town center. It's got a fabulous terrace outside that has live music and barbecues outside and a great atmosphere on a sunny day. And it's um, got a beautiful spa as well. So the hotel offers the ultimate in comfort and charm with a blend of restaurants, uh, fine dining for AA Rosette restaurant, Tassily, and the elegant and understated Victorious as well. It's got a chic and atmospheric champagne lounge as well, which again, I would highly recommend. And the spa is, is well worth a visit. Just uh, remember to book that in advance as well, because it's very popular with the Islanders too. Okay, Sarah. So the Lorizon Beach Hotel and Spa, you can see from the image, it's in this beautiful setting on St. Brellard's Bay. It's really, really wonderful to wake up there and just walk out in the morning and see the, the beach and the sea. It's absolutely stunning. So the hotel itself has 106 rooms, one pool, one spa and three restaurants. The majority of the guest rooms are sea facing with balconies and they're created with a colour palette, curvy designed to bring the outdoors in. You certainly feel like you're on holiday at the Lorizon, I've got to say. Um, the food is fantastic at the Grill, the hotel's 2AA Rosette restaurant. And again, you get lots of fresh locally caught seafood. So with unsurpassed ocean views, the terrace boasts what is undoubtedly one of the best alfresco dining experiences in Jersey. And also along this bay, you do have other restaurants that you can visit and bars. So it's quite, quite, um, although it's outside of St. Helier, it has got its own little capsule of restaurants and bars. Uh, the next hotel, just to give you something different, is the Green Hills Hotel. So this is a country house hotel, and this is nestled in a peaceful rural setting on the island of Jersey. So very calm and peaceful. Um, it's a comfortable and luxurious hotel with the very standard, high standards of service. The main wing of the hotel dates back to 1674, and the history is reflected in the character and atmosphere of this beautiful country house. Okay, so that's the Green Hills. So the next two are, I've picked out a couple of family breaks. I'm taking my family there this year. I can't wait to go. It's, the kids have grown up a bit since we last went but I would love to stay in the Dural Wildlife Camp. Now, as Sarah mentioned, um, the Jersey Zoo is set in beautiful grounds and they do have this ultimate glamping experience with a unique twist of staying actually on the site of the Jersey Zoo. Um, these aren't often available, to be honest, and these are slightly outside of the summer holidays, um, but there is availability in September which say it's quite unusual for them to have availability because they get snapped up. But it's situated on the side of the zoo, the camping pods with wood burning stoves, there's on-site eateries, free unlimited access to the zoo within opening hours, I must stress. And there's a chance to book behind the scenes animal experience. So quite a unique um, chance to visit there. And those prices are based on two adults and two kids sharing one of the pods. The Merton Hotel is another favorite but it's it's a great family hotel but I'd also recommend it for couples as well because uh, it's got so much going on there it's a it's a large three-star resort style hotel on the outskirts of St Helier town centre it's one of the largest hotels in Jersey it provides a wide selection of restaurants bars and leisure facilities for guests the Merton Aquadome is one of Jersey's premier leisure facilities and includes outdoor and indoor pools and the UK's first flow rider surf machine. The hotel, as I said, offers something for everyone. It's ideal for couples, families and kids. There's also a um, free kids club and a free teenage club as well. So that's another highly recommended hotel. So, 
Sorry, I was just... so that's it on the on the hotel project. As I say, I hope that we can. We've reassured you that your holiday is safe with us, um, working with Miles Morgan as well to provide the best service we can. And that Sarah has provided you with enough insight on all the things that you can do while you're in Jersey. And we hope to uh, welcome you to Jersey soon. Thank you. Blimey, thank you very much, you two. Um, that was excellent. I think, um, the first thing I'm immediately hopeful of is possibly winning a pub quiz because I had no idea that Jersey had its own language, I have to admit. So um, that could be a potential pub quiz winner for me, which is good. Um, we've immediately had a question um, and it was actually probably one of the things I wanted to pick up on in particular is, you know, when we think about a holiday in the UK, the UK is a wonderful place to holiday, Lake District, wherever you fancy going. One of people's concerns is the unpredictability of the weather and the climate. Um, how much better is Jersey than the UK in terms of climate? And particularly for Richard, Richard's thinking about traveling in October. Um, what can he expect to experience weather-wise in October? I don't know who wants to pick that one up. I don't mind. I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> um, I haven't, but um, I have to say that um, you know, Jersey, as I, as I did briefly touch upon, did is the sunniest spot in the British Isles. So we do have the best weather in the British Isles. So that's, um, you know, reassuring. However, you know, we also do say we embrace the weather because I think that's the wonderful thing about a great island in that, um, you know, in October, it can be beautifully stunningly sunny. And I've been there in October and sat outside with a glass of wine on St. Juan's Beach enjoying a sunset and it was incredible weather. We know, you know, the weather is a little bit unpredictable at the moment. So, um, you know what, it's the kind of place that even if you did have a cloudy day, there is so much to do and enjoy that I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Um, there's some beautiful beaches that even if you're not out in your sun, you know, your, your bikini or your swimming costume, you know, you can go for a wonderful walk. I mean, every time I look at those beaches, it's just the best place, um, whether the sun's shining or whether it's a bit cloudy to go for a nice long walk along them and you'll just enjoy being in the sea air and, and we just say embrace your surroundings you know because that's what makes um jersey so stunning so not an exact answer i know i don't i can't predict the weather but um you know the one thing we can say is this is the sunniest spot in the british Isles. I, yeah, I guess I, you, I, you would have a few degrees warmer than the uk literally because it's closer to france than it is to us absolutely yes yeah, yeah, I, I agree with what Sarah's saying. It's generally generally warmer. I mean, I've been there in January and seen the, the sun uh, snowdrops out and the daffodils coming up. I'd go in October. Um, I'd go in March and April. I'd chance it in March. And you will generally find, you know, you're getting into spring in March and April a bit earlier. The summer lasts a bit longer as well. And I, I take travel agents over in those periods of the year and we always have fabulous weather. So it's possibly quite a good tip that people can go to Jersey as a destination for the beginning of the season, end of the season, with possibly a bit more reliability than maybe, there's obviously no guarantees, as Sarah said, but a bit more reliability than, than taking a holiday in the mainland of the yeah. UK. Yeah. I was just going to say the, the thing to remember as well, there's some great deals out there and I'm sure you guys, you know, will be able to provide those. But um, going outside of the peak peak season, you know, you're going to find some fantastic offers. There'll be things wrapped into that, whether it's afternoon teas, whether it's, you know, meals or access to different attractions. I mean, it's a nice thing. And it's it's whilst Jersey never gets really, really busy. I mean, you'll never find what you'll find in Cornwall where those beaches are absolutely rammed. Even in peak season, it just doesn't get like that. You know, you go in August and those beaches will still be very spacious and um, you know you won't feel like there's hundreds of thousand people who have just arrived there um, but yeah it's a lovely place to go all around definitely. And um, we have Tanner Fest in the October period as well don't we where at the hotels if you if you go in for a foodie break a lot of the hotels and um, restaurants are doing great deals on, on food packages as well. I think it's probably fair to say for, for the majority of people on this that are probably based, you know, around the Bristol area, maybe into South Wales, I reckon you would probably be on your first gin and tonic in the bar 
um, by the time you fly across from Bristol to St Helier and, and, and have a beer than probably driving down to Padstow and being stuck on the M5 for, for hours on end like it has been for the last couple of weekends. I think that I can almost guarantee that one, Sarah. Unlike the weather one, I could probably predict with you on the M5 and say that you're a lot better go to Jersey. Yeah, I mean, the journey over to Jersey is, is pretty easy, you know, which is great. And you're right. If you take a, you know, a midday flight or something, you're there. You know, the, the, the air hostesses and stewards, you know, hardly have time to ask you if you want a drink and a sandwich and you're landing. But that's fantastic. It's a really short flight. You're not too exhausted. You can head straight out to the beach, get that glass of wine, gin and tonic or liberation ale and just relax and enjoy yourself. Yeah, I think my my probably lasting memory of my trip over there was was simply the pace of life and the tranquility and de-stressing. Everything seems to move a bit slower and it just seems to be way more relaxing was was my experience of it. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, there's only one short, um, I, would, I would say that's the point you can kind of, you know, um, take the public transport around the island. It's very easy to get to, you know, you're never that far away from a beautiful fishing village, a long stretch of beach, um, you know, inland, some wonderful walks, you know, we even have our own like mini um, Stonehenge over there. As I said, it goes back to that sort of Ice Age, Neolithic period. And, you know, you'll find around the island these kind of little dolmens, um, which you can go and discover and go and be amongst it all sort of. Um, and I didn't mention we have one of the oldest, tense oldest buildings in the world, La Ho B. I mean, it's an old burial passage grave, but, you know, it's older than the pyramids. So, again, something else that you wouldn't have known that's on Jersey that's worth exploring. And, and, and I think that's what that's the nice thing about Jersey is you'll keep discovering places, little hidden gems all around the island. So, you know, it's it is there is a relaxed pace of life. Um, but you will want to fill your days as well. You know, you want to go and see something in the morning and then go to the beach in the afternoon. And it's easy to do that. Mm. Um, we've got no further questions, but I love I love to finish on this one and put the two of you on the spot, which is great. So my question to both of you and Sarah, I'll start with you. That gives Jill, that gives you a bit of extra time to think of your answer. Um, if, you, if there was one hidden gem on Jersey and it can be a hotel, it can be a restaurant, it can be an area, it can be a place, it can be anything you like. One hidden gem where you would say when you go, whatever happens, don't miss this one. This is an absolute beauty. You just can't afford to miss it. Um, what would it be, Sarah? Oh, gosh, I kind of gave it away earlier on because I absolutely loved going, discovering Faultless Fishery because it was just, you know, it's a kind of place where you could hire one of those electric EV bikes cycle out to St. Ones and um, that stretch of beach is phenomenal. You know, there's the surfers go there, but it's just a kind of place where you can just chill out, relax. There's a, I'm going to say a few hidden gems here. There's a, there's a restaurant kind of surfy bar place called El Tico's, which is the best place to have a glass of wine and watch the sunset. But further up from that is Faulkner's Fishery, which I already mentioned, but I loved going there. It's so simple and basic and you get your, you know, your freshly barbecued food in a little tinfoil tray almost, and you just sit outside. And I just thought that was phenomenal. Um, you know, and I think that, that but there's, it's so difficult. Well, Jill will go on to mention more, but it's so difficult to pick that one because there are so many hidden gems, I think, that make, make the trip so special. I think there is, but I think what, what I love about doing the, the Zooms is obviously you can go on the internet and you can look at all sorts of stuff, but the great thing about having experts like you on this is just putting you on the spot and saying, come on, you know, what, what, what would you do? Where would be the wow factor? And, and that's why it's lovely to hear you suggest places where people go, right, okay, let's make sure we do that when we, when we go. Can I add one more? Go on, you can show. I'm, I'm getting all excited now. Um, <laughs> something else I did, and okay, you know, the world has gone paddleboarding crazy, and it may not be for you, but I would say, you know, I went over to um, Greb to Lek, and um, we went out and took a, we well, learned how to paddleboard because I've never done it before, and realised I've got no core strength, but they took us out just out on the paddleboard, and we kind of paddled round to a couple of hidden coves, and you know, I just saw them and thought I could be in Thailand or somewhere like that. They were absolutely stunning. And, um, you know, that's that's the joy of Jersey. Those kind of little 
hidden bays and coves. And, and a nice way to see Jersey is actually from the shoreline looking back, you know, so there's some wonderful boat trips and things you can do looking back into Jersey, you know, and, and seeing those hidden bays. And like I said, going out to the Les Ecuero and the Minkies, you know, that's, that's a fantastic way to see the island. I'm going to stop now because I keep you're, you're, on, you're, you're on a roll now. <laughs> Jill's going to give us half an hour now. Go on, Jill, with you. go on, go on. Well, I would say coast. So I'm going to cheat because I would say co-steering, but I'm too afraid to do it. But that looks absolutely amazing. Scrambling over cliff tops with a guide, jumping into the water, into the sea, but um, far too um, adventurous for me. So what I'm going to do with my kids when we go is go on a safari, and it's a rib trip organized for you where you go over to a little spit of land called Le Ecrehu. Uh, you see dolphins on the way. It's an exhilarating ride and you get off and you can have a picnic. Um, I've heard of people doing yoga there, um, lots of things you can, how you can experience it, but it's really unique. Again, gives you that sense of being on the island um, because you're out, out in the sea and approaching it and you know you can see France on a clear day. It's um, it's it's a fabulous experience and one I like to take people on when I go over. Definitely, a safari. I like that. Sea so fari, for yeah. those of you who might not know what a rib is, a rib, if I've got it right, is like an inflatable with a motor, an inflatable yes. boat with a motor. Yes. Yeah. So you've all got your where, life whereabouts on. is that on the island, Jill? Where where do you do that? Um, well, you go to Saint Catherine's Bay. Saint Catherine's Bay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Out from there. Brilliant. Okay. Called Jersey Safaris. Yeah, it's fabulous. Everybody be scribbling that one down now. They'll, they'll be pleased. <laughs> well, look, thank you very, very much to, to both Sarah and Jill. If you do have any further questions, then please, you know, pop into your local shop, contact them. We can get hold of both Sarah and Jill if you have any supplementary questions. If you're interested in any of those hotels that, that Jill mentioned or, or anything else slightly different, then obviously get in touch with your shop. They can get in touch with Airways and we can sort you out because I do think um, as a result of everything that's gone on, as people start to travel again, I have no doubt that Jersey will, will get a lot of that business as people start to get used to traveling again over the next few, uh, few weeks and months. So uh, thank you everybody for joining. Hope you enjoyed the session and to Sarah and Jill, thank you very much for your time. Uh, have a great Sunday afternoon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.